بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم محمد ونسلی علیہ رسول کریم دی پرپز آف دس سیشن از ٹو کمپیئر ایگزٹنگ مینجمنٹ تھیریز ود اسلامک مینجمنٹ تھیری فسٹ آف آل وی نیڈ ٹو لک ایٹ دی شارٹ کمنگز آف ایگزٹنگ تھیریز دی فسٹ از امپلائیز آر انڈر پیڈ سیکنڈ دے آر بینگ اپریسڈ Third, there is a hierarchical structure in the organizations. And the fourth one, based upon authority, which people use for coercion and oppression. Now we'll take them one by one to discuss and compare with the Islamic management theory. Underpaid. Here are two examples which are showing that in OECD countries, the gender gap between Uh, male and female is uh, very wide and second in the United Kingdom uh, white people are getting about 22% more in the city of London than Bangladeshi and other uh, people similarly uh, as a whole Bangladeshi people are getting 20% less than others in the entire country and also Pakistani and other ethnic groups they are also getting less than their counterpart white people and compared to this Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a business transaction with a Jew and there was some hard exchange of hard words while Uh, he was demanding, the Jew was demanding back his, uh, his loan. Rasulullah paid him more than what is supposed to be paid. So that shows that Islamic theory is, you know, telling us that pay more than what people des- uh, deserve. especially the laborers. In human treatment with people, with subordinates, here is the uh, example that Anas Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu served Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 10 years. But uh, he said that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say to me, why have you done this job and why have you not done this job? So this shows the extreme level of affection. In other example, there was a slave of Lord Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was known as Zayd Razi Allah Ta'ala. Once his father and uncle came to collect him back to make him free, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, if Zayd is ready to go with you, you can take him free of cost. But Zayd Razi Allah Ta'ala refused to go with his father and uncle because he knew the treatment of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there is a hierarchical structure. There are many layers of management these days. If you take the example of army, there are more than 10 layers of management. Even uh, in universities, we have many, many layers of management starting from vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, registrar, directors, deans, and chairpersons, so on and so forth. So uh, Islam has given us a flat organization structure. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly communicated with uh, Musa alayhi salatu wa And in general, Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to communicate with his prophets through Jibreel alayhi So that makes only one layer of management. Similarly, Prophet sallallahu did the same. He used to have teams and they were, these teams were managing uh, the other people. So again, here there was only one uh, layer, layer of management. <coughs> 
during the battle of trench prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam established hundreds of teams and each team uh, consists of 10 persons and they were given some uh, task to perform however sometimes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly consulted with his uh, subordinates and his teams he had a team a consultation team of senior companions they used to give him uh, advice on various occasions here you can see the on the occasion of the battle of uh, ohud prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly consulted with everyone and uh, to plan the uh, you know uh, the, uh, the the program of uh, of the battle so after consultation he decided to go out of the town to uh, defend himself and then we have another objection about the existing theories that they are based upon authority and people are using these other these uh, authorities for coercion and oppression but uh, compared to that we have this uh, hadith if you look at this uh, uh, highlighted part if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts someone in charge of any of the affairs of the muslims and he is then blind to their needs friendship and poverty then what is the punishment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be blind to his needs friendship and poverty on the day of resurrection so that's a stern warning so the rulers the managers they need to look after the needs of their subordinates then there are uh, assumptions of existing theories they believe that implies are a source of productivity and a lot of research was done about it especially the research done during 1927 to 1932 by Alton Mayo and how the productivity productivity can be increased so the objective is not to increase the welfare of people but to increase the productivity second employees are machines take as much work as you can like other factors of production and there are some humanistic aspect of uh, of aspect in the current theories but they are not for the welfare of people they are again for the sake of increasing productivity compared to that Uh, the assumption of islamic management theory are five four the first one implies are humans uh, some of them could be muslims and uh, they have uh, some role to play in the society and they then they are the employees of your organization so what are the implications uh, uh, about uh, of these assumptions if they are human beings then treat them like human beings because uh, people need, people want to be treated as humans in other words want to be treated softly and they are muslims being a muslim they have some rights and these rights the organization must fulfill and then they have a role to play in the society every employee is a part of the society and the member of this society they are expecting to do something for them at least to spare some time for them at least to contribute financially if he is making money for the welfare and development of the society and also it means that when sure uh, when you know organization will be taking 
to work from employee for 12 hours or 16 hours. Then there will be no time uh, with the employees to contribute for the organization. For uh, there is no time for the to contribute for the society. Everything is work for organization. Remaining eight hours or so, he will be looking after his family, and he will be uh, taking uh, preparation for the next day. So this is because of the overtime. Overtime is most of the time is beneficial for the employer because he is trying to save the taxes through not hiring new people in his organization. So here uh, the Islamic management theory says that take work according to the capacity of the employees. Here are some other aspects of comparison like contemporary the theories they say that take work from others at any cost. It does not, you know, uh, take into account the limitations of employee. They need to work for their own objectives. But compared to that, Islamic management theory suggests that take work according to the Islamic Sharia. Islamic Sharia doesn't allow to take work more than the capacity of the employees. Similarly, we have this, this table explaining more aspects of uh, the contemporary and the Islamic management theory. For example, take work as much as possible, as much as you need. But Islamic management theory says take a work according to the capacity of the employees. And there are so many hadiths about it. Second, pay after taking work. Islamic management theory is uh, saying that pay in advance. If billions of dollars online business uh, can be run through advance payment, why a person who is dependent upon and who is poor in technical terms is being paid after one month, after one week, after two weeks, he should be paid in advance. That would increase his motivation and loyalty to the organization. The next one, take punitive actions for mistakes. Islamic theory says, first of all, forgive them. Second, consider their past contribution in the organization. And Prophet had set an example about it. Man Sabi made a mistake during the conquest of Makkah and Prophet ﷺ forgave him because he had participated in the battle of Badr. So that gives us, gives, gives us a principle that we should consider the previous contribution of that person while we are treating with them in terms of their mistakes. And then we are making a reward in this world. A reward of the work is only in this world. While reward of work, according to Islamic theory, is not only in this world, but also in the, in the hereafter. And this theory is divinely revealed. But the contemporary theories are man-made. So, it makes a wide difference between them. And similarly, authority in the contemporary theories is for coercion and oppression. While authority in the Islamic theory is for cooperation, support of their subordinates. And we have seen so many examples. Examples in the era of Prophet example in the era of is righted, uh, rightly guided caliphs, especially uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And in the contemporary theories, as we have said, there is a tall organization structure. While Islamic theory is offering us 
a flat organization structures with minimum layers of management. So we can conclude that Islamic management theory is a win-win approach. Managers win here and also the employees wins. While the contemporary theories, they are win and loss approach. Management, managers, owners, they are the winners. They are on the winner side. And employees, they are also on the other side. They are on the loser side. They contribute a lot, but getting a little bit out of their contribution in the organization. So, we conclude that Islamic management theory is an improvement over all other theories which have been which have been put forward by different experts during their times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and understanding to understand and spread these words to others and also to practice this word. With these words, I take your permission. Wa akhru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.